Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and I want to have a little bit of a rant today about health and safety. Health and safety gone mad. How many times have you heard that phrase? I've heard it a lot. And I'm one of those people that thinks that actually a good bit of health and safety is a nice thing because if it saves people dying, saves people getting injured on site, that's always a good thing because if you've ever been on a site where somebody's been killed, it does tend to bring the party mood down a little bit. So let's all do what we can to avoid injury, to avoid death, and to make everybody's lives just a little bit happier because no job is worth dying for. But let's have a look at this particular situation here with an electrician who's working for Barrett Homes in Southampton. He's doing a job down that way and he's running a bit of cable through the, through the loft. He's doing a bit of a conduit and so on. And he has the misfortune of falling through the plasterboard, through the ceiling and landing in a room downstairs. Now, that's happened to a few of us. It may have even happened to you. It's, I've had a couple of near misses with it. Never quite happened, touch wood. Let's hope it never does. But you do have to be careful when you're working in lofts. We all know that risk and we avoid it if we can, not least because we don't want to end up having to do a ceiling repair when all we came to do was change a ball valve or put in an extractor fan or something like that. So there you are. That's the mission, isn't it? Be careful when you're up in a loft. But this poor guy fell through and the HSE got wind of this and he broke a few ribs, punctured a lung, unfortunately, but uh, he walked again. He was fine. He got back on and he was working again. So it wasn't the end of the world, but it could have been nastier. Rather depends what you land on. I had a guy I know who fell through the ceiling and landed on a bed. Lovely soft landing. So apart from the fact he pissed the customer off a little bit, he got away with it. So this guy a bit more serious, obviously. So they talk Barrett Homes and the electrical contractor, subcontractor that had employed this fella to call and they find Barrett Homes £160,000. They find the electrical subcontractor about £23,000. They gave this guy about £240, I think it was, anyway, whatever. Hefty old fine if you're a subcontractor. You don't expect a bill for £23,000 when you've got a tight price in for a job, do you? But what do you do about this? Now, the health and safety executive, after the court case, said it's beholden upon every employer to safeguard their, their employees and, and anybody working below when they're working at heights. And I thought, my goodness, this now constitutes working at height. Of course it does. It's not just out here on the roof when you're working at heights. It can be off a stepladder or it can be in a loft. So how do you mitigate the risk? You do your method statement, you, you have a look at risk assessment. The risk is falling through the ceiling and injuring yourself. So you've got to mitigate the risk. So you come up with an idea. You come up with an idea that you're going to stage out the entire ground floor here. No, first of all, probably the first thing is you say, don't tack the ceilings until the electricians and the plumbers have finished in the loft. That would be a sensible solution. But we know what happens. People want to get on. The tackers are in there. The plasterers want to get going. The electrician hasn't quite finished the job. So he goes up, no problem, through the loft hatch. That's what loft hatches are for after all. And he gets up there and he does the little bit of job. Innocent enough. Nobody would argue with that. But what Barrett Homes will no doubt do from now on is they won't tack any of these ceilings till they make sure all that work is complete up there so the fella can work from below. But that's all right for Barrett Homes. But what about you? What about me when we're doing these little jobs in people's houses? I've got to go up and change a ball valve. You've got to go up and put an extractor fan in or whatever your particular trade is as a job to be done. Even loft insulation, anything like that. You get up there, you can't move for Christmas decorations. You're crawling around in the dark, you know, but you are careful. You're careful not to fall through because you don't want to be repairing that ceiling and you don't want to injure yourself. So what can you do other than that? You could say, all right, I'm going to stage out the entire underside of here or I'm going to put, put full bags across the entire upper floor. You know, turn every single bedroom into a bouncing castle. The kids will love it. But really, let's realistically talk about this. What are you going to do in a situation like that? The health and safety executive are poised to charge you a whacking load of money, £160,000 for making that small error of sending somebody up into a loft without protecting them from falling through. No matter you've told them not to fall through, you've got some young apprentice or something, he's got to go up there, do a little bit of a job and these jobs need to be done. So you've got to say, OK, lad, you can't go up there until maybe we've boarded out the whole loft. I've got somebody else to board out the whole loft. And of course, if you're going to board out the loft, you've got to put the first board in and then move along so that you do it in a kind of tunnel way, if you like. And 
we know they do this when they put the boilers in lofts now people want a, a walkway there they even want handrails for the service engineer so you can walk along completely guarded you know it's made a nonsense of it really but really for us for you for me maybe it's a it's a massive problem isn't it because now with this precedent having been set which is how it's set through case law people can always point to that we have no defense we've got nowhere to go we've got to make sure that anybody who goes up in a loft is protected so i'd love to know what you think about it i think it's a step too far i understand you've got to protect the guy but i think at some point your skill is not falling through the loft that's what you're employed for that's why we don't send up mrs blogs or somebody else because we say you've got to be careful up there you know people are going up in the loft to get their suitcases and their christmas decorations they know they shouldn't fall through the loft so why should a, a contractor be any different come on tell me what you think i'd love you to disagree with me if you think that this is reasonable that people should mitigate against all these risks or maybe like me you think that there comes a point when your skill and your judgment just has to kick in and you have to be careful now i've had a couple of near misses haven't fallen through touch wood but i know a few people it's happened to and normally it doesn't end up in any horrendous way it rather depends what you fall onto but there you go that's me do let me know what you think because it's all about the discussion and come back to skill builder soon because we'll be having a few more discussions